Hello there, it's Miriam with Engadget. I'm at the Maker Fair with Hugo Fines, the CEO of Electric Imp. Hi Hugo, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. So you know, there's a lot of buzz about Electric Imp at the show, and I know our readers are kind of interested in what exactly is Electric Imp, and so I thought I'd ask you to tell us a little bit about it. Um, can you show us the module and uh, explain to us basically what you're trying to do? Okay, so Electric Imp is two things. It's uh, this little cup um, and a service, a cloud service that runs with it. So what this is, it, it looks like a memory card, but what it actually is, is Wi-Fi and a processor. Uh, it's like an entire network node. Um, and what happens is you put this into other devices and it connects them to the internet. So basically you're using the SD form factor, but it's not an SD device. That's correct. It's not that, you know, you can put this into a camera and it won't do anything bad. Right. It won't work either. Right. Um, but basically we use this form factor. It's a very, you know, customers are used to handling these. Uh -huh. They're good sockets for them. And how it works is, you know, we have these contacts in the back, which would usually be used to transmit, uh, you know, data to and from memory in the card. And what we use them for is, you can use them to control and sense any device, pretty much. Right. Um, so you connect the card into basically daughter boards that allow you to interface with the real world. So you connect it into, I mean, we've got development boards, like this is a little development board, but in the end it goes into products. Right. So, um, but obviously if you're making your own stuff, you can use little dev boards to make it easy. So this is a kind of a silly little dev board. Um, it has a switch and a light. Um, and a socket and a battery. So this is like our seven seven dollar dev board. It just let, gives you access to the pins. So when I plug the card in, now the Wi-Fi is pretty bad around here, so it takes a while to connect. Um, it usually connects in good circumstances in about a second. So what and it's doing is it's connecting over Wi-Fi. And you have a little notification light at the bottom, little right? Light. It's now flashing green, so we're actually online now. Um, but that's connected to standard Wi-Fi network, and it's gone from there here at the show. It's going via Wi-Fi to uh, AT to AT and LTE dongle up to AT&T from there to Amazon to our servers um, and so this is directly connected with no gateway or anything in between it's connected to Amazon this to our service this is showing how you connect the device to Wi-Fi so there are no buttons so we had to come up with a new way of configuring Wi-Fi so this here is showing it's offline it's flashing red so I need to get a Wi-Fi SSID and password into it if you're running on a secure network. Right. So what I do is we have a, an app, the, the Electric Imp app. I've entered, this is a process, not very pretty, but entered my ID and password, and I press configure wireless and hold my screen, I'll show this, up to here. And we basically use an opto sensor on the device to configure the Wi-Fi. And in a second, it should go green, showing it's online. This is Wi-Fi, it's a bit slow here. There you go. There you go, wow. So, this is actually something we're licensing, people can use because I think all the pain of configuring Apple Airplay devices, for example, all pressing buttons and doing SSID configuration, just using an app is way, way easier. We have a version for Android as well, so it's kind of a... Hey, um, right on. Uh, I, we think it's like the way of the future for configuring, just getting a few bits of information from point A to point B. The screens are very bright and it works really well. And so when I click this switch, things can happen. Right. I'm telling the server um, some some information. So here, now you can see there's a there's a screen with a number 254 in it, and that's also a device connected with a card. There's a card. You can see the blinking green light, maybe on the far left. When I flick this switch, the number goes down. So actually what's happening is, looking at the planner on the screen, this is like a graphic representation of how things are hooked up. There's a lot of mess on, there's a lot of devices on here. So what you're saying to me is, basically, you are controlling um, devices, yep. and the code is actually running on the server. Well, some of the code is. Actually, what happens is when you plug the card into the device, there's an ID chip, it knows what device it's plugged into. It asks the server for software, and the server sends it down the software to operate the device it's plugged into. Got so it. if I take this card out and plug it into a different device, like, um, I mean, I have another device here, I have to take that card out. If I take this one out, plug it into here, this is a, a water level sensor, um, it'll connect up as well. Um, and this water level sensor 
And you've got it hooked up to the light behind the TV, right? Yeah, so if you look at behind the TV, when I, I don't know, water, but I squeeze this, I can make it go green, I like go blue. Yeah. So this is me squeezing this, this sensor. And that's a round trip. This is going all the way up to the internet over LTE and Wi-Fi and everything, and back down again and controlling that light. So, that's so, although this is like, you know, five feet from the light, it could be the other side of the right. world. Right, you could be anywhere in the world with this thing in your hand and controlling that light, controlling that counter over there. Yep. So you're going to show us uh, coding uh, for the Electric Imp using a MacBook Air, basically just a web browser, really. Yep. This is just in Chrome. Um, so here's like the programming interface. This is a, a very simple example. This is a switch. So I've connected it to pin one. Yep. Saying oh, there's a switch on pin one with a pull up. When it changes, call the function switched, which is this. Mm -hmm. And all it does is basically check the state. If it's, it's different, on. send it to the server. Excellent. So the point is about it, this is the code. It actually runs on the card. But this code, I can edit it on the web. I get logging at it. I can see at the bottom as I get a little log. Um, I can do all my development online. And I don't have to, one of the really important things is if I want to update myself from this device, wherever it is in the world, I can do it on here. Um, and the code doesn't need to deal with all of the infrastructure. Basically, we've taken care of the Wi-Fi, the secure connection to the server, the encryption, all that stuff. And you write this code in, it's called Squirrel, which is actually, it looks a bit like JavaScript, a bit like C++. It's an object-oriented language, but you write it in that. And it's like writing a high-level language. It's like you don't have to deal with all the intricate details of the hardware. You just say what you want to do, pretty much. Right. And um, so, based, presumably, you could have daughter boards for anything. You can and have lots of stuff. Because the basic functionality of the processor and the wireless is in every card. Yes. You just need a bunch of those and their proper adapters and then a bit of code on the web and you're ready to do all kinds of really cool apps. Yeah, I mean, we can show you the, the Twitter printer. This is kind of fun. So this is, this here is, there's, there's two things. The top one, this is a display we made. It's got 256 pixels. It's yeah. made with RGB strip we bought from Muddy Spark Fun. If you squint right now, you can see my Twitter uh, avatar. <laughs> Actually, because that I just tweeted, and this is actually what I tweeted, right? Yeah. So um, this one here, this is an imp. It's hooked up to a screen there. It's running a spy interface to here and an I to C interface there. But it's still basically configuring the software. And this one here is the printer. Um, it's got the wrong. It's at the moment, this one's like kind of it's one out of sync. The next one will say it's from you. Um, <laughs> it's all a bug in your code. It's all a bug in the code. But this is this one's got an imp in it, which is doing serial, and that one there is doing the picture. The planner has a, has a Twitter node, and the Twitter node is running searches for electric imps, and that's the last tweet, and it sends it to the LED display in the printer. So it's like building an application, like a web application, and a real embedded application, sort of two in one, taking the best strengths of doing development on the internet, right. and you know, using, you don't have to run all the complex stuff on the tiny device, you can use the server to do the heavy lifting, and then just get the end to do the I.O. Okay, so this is the water level sense we made. It's very simple. It really has a power supply, the ID chip, and, and one little chip, an inverter, to, to measure the capacitance of the water. And so this, basically, we've got it hooked over here. Well, it's not a very good picture, but... Um, Water level sensor is speed gauge. The water level sensor is hooked up to here, which is a servo connected directly to one of the pins of the imp. And when the capacitance has changes, like when I hold it, I can make this go up and down. So I have some water, and as I dip it in the water, you'll see the level change. But, you know, you can have this doing anything. You can have it like when it gets to half full, it sends a text message, or it tweets, or whatever. It's and so like, this is still like a Again, going from this 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 board to the internet to your servers and back to this board. Yeah, over LTE as well. Over LTE. So tell me a little bit. How how did this come about? Like, how did you how do you come up with the idea and what prompted you to go in this direction? So actually. Um 
I got my bar performing model last year, and being a bit geeky, you know, I, I had a floating <laughs> cabinet and I went, oh, RGB strip, I've always wanted RGB lighting. So I put in like a 64 pixel RGB strip under my light, under my cabinet, and I was working with an Arduino and a Wi-Fi shield to try and hook this up, so I wanted it to display like the weather, a number of unread messages in my inbox, by doing like different amounts of different colors. Right. Um, and it was actually really hard, uh, and I was basically working on this, and, like, you know, coding on the Arduino and running out of memory and things like that, and thinking like, why is connecting a device to the internet so hard? It shouldn't be hard anymore. You know, Wi-Fi's been around for a long time, TCP IP has been around forever, you know, in internet terms at least, well, definitely forever in internet terms. <laughs> um, and it was like, okay, well, why doesn't, you know, what really needs to happen is someone to do this competently, to actually put Tie it together. all together. Yeah, put a good, good Wi-Fi, great software, and make it easy for anything to be connected so no one else has to, you know, fight all this uphill battle again. You just, I just wanted to get lights in my bathroom cabinet. I didn't care about keeping HTTP, you know, passing HTTP responses right. and all this stuff. So that's how I came up with the idea and I refined it a bit and I actually spent the, some of the previous five years working at Apple on the iPhone. So I was really used to working with, like, you know, making very small electronics, working with wireless things. Um, and obviously, I've been a, a geek and uh, making homebrew and you know stuff for a long time, um, and so I kind of like, oh, this is great! I could put this together, use my skills from one place to another, and actually build this thing and make a make a really good solution to this problem, so that ideally no one else has to go through the pain anymore. So tell me, um, pricing availability. Where, I, if, if I'm interested in getting involved and in doing something like that, where can I go? How much does it cost? Uh, what boards are available to plug the uh, main unit into? Okay, so at the moment, this is very early, obviously. We made the boards for it to plug into, so we made a few dev boards. Uh, the most basic one is this, which you can see this one was built from. This is just like the minimal. This has um, a slot, an ID chip, and a power supply. And then it has a header. You can connect whatever you need to connect to it onto here. So basically, that's like a $7 board. It's just a little dev board. Um, then the actual card itself is 25 bucks. Wow. So you can move these around. So, you know, you can have several boards and several projects you're working on and just move the card around. Right, sure. Um, but in the long run, you know, we're hoping manufacturers will adopt this and put it in devices. And we made some devices with demos. We like have a washing machine here, which is a kid's washing machine, but it has an M slot. Um, I want an SD card slot on my washing machine. <laughs> And there's a plug top, so it's just power control and monitoring. Uh -huh. We've got one here with a slot, which actually is, is built into the wall, a wall socket with that. Uh -huh. It monitors the power on both slots. Here we have some uh, GE Christmas lights, which are hooked up um, with an imp slot. Uh, You've got the counter over here. We've got the counter, which someone is flicking their counter and making the number go up. And if I plug an in pin and wait for this to come up, I can flick my switch and make it go down, because one that makes it go up, one makes it go down. So we have a couple of boards. This one's called Duino. And basically, it's uh, Arduino. But instead of having the USB plug you plug in, yeah. you plug in an imp slot. So which means that you can put it into an Arduino project you've done without changing any code and actually then access the Arduino over Wi-Fi from anywhere. So if you wanted your Arduino to tweet, you could make it hook it up to a Twitter blog and make it tweet. Right. Um, it just it, it appears, it's connected to the serial of the, of the, the Atmega processor, so it's very easy to, to put together. And then we have one other board that we're doing. With sensors and and buttons and a potentiometer. And buttons and everything. So this is kind of like a kitchen sink board. We threw everything on it uh, to let people make things. So this has got a pot, it's got two buttons, it's got a, a hole sensor, a three-axis accelerometer, uh, a temperature sensor, an RGB light sensor, two servo plugs, wow. um, and some spare I.O. and an RGB LED. Nice. So the idea with this is that, and it has batteries, so you can run it off USB or batteries. But the idea with this is like, if you say wanted to have an application where, okay, I've got two of these, I don't do soldering, I want to put something useful together. 
say I have a mailbox, I want it to, when it detects lights in the mailbox, it's almost open the mailbox, or maybe the vibration of someone opening the door of the mailbox, it can wake up, send the notification to the internet, through the internet to another one of these, which has a flag on a servo. So when the mailbox is open, this can, flag comes up anywhere right. else in the world, and I can tell I have mail. Um, and you could do that with no soldering, it's kind of like a simple thing. Right, of course. We wanted to log the temperature, or see how cold it gets in your so garage. So how much does this board cost? So this one I think we're selling for 25 Five bucks. Uh -huh. um, plus, you can plug the card in to make it useful. What about the Arduino board? How much is that? Uh, that was twenty. Um, but really, we're not. You know, we've made some of these at the beginning for launch. But this is not our business. Um, you know, we're basically giving these designs away free. We're going to pop the, the, the Gerber files and the schematics and stuff up on the internet for people to, to take them. Um, but we're, you know, we're making the card and the service. That's what we do. Uh, these are just to like show people right. the possibilities. Are you selling them anywhere on your website? So, end of next month, we'll be shipping the dev boards and the cards. Uh, so we have a mailing list to join at the moment. Um, an ordering system will be up soon. Um, we're probably going to be out of the first batch um, quite quickly. Um, but uh, there's another batch following along pretty soon afterwards. So we're trying to get stuff moving on that. But uh, there's been a, a pretty big response. It's, it's a lot of fun. Indeed. So. Well, listen, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate the demo. And uh, thanks. Cheers. Thank you.